All right, pirate, midi, bridge six, bridge four. Check this out. Snapshot. Plus, there's a web editor. I'm gonna show you how to work it. And I'm also gonna show you how to update, because I updated the bridge six, but I have not updated the bridge four yet. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's dive in. All right, so let's go to piratemini.com. Right here, we can see editor. Boom, we can do all that. But we don't wanna do that yet, because we want to update our device. So I'm gonna go to shop, click bridge controller, bridge four. You can download the user manual, but you can also go here to firmware updates. It takes you to this website. There are some instructions. You need to follow them to the T. And even when I did that, I had a problem because my bridge four was so old. <laughs> I've had this for, I've had both of these for like almost two years now. I've been waiting on the editor to come out and it's been out a while and I just haven't got a chance to get to it, but I'm excited to show you now. So all we need to do is hook this up. Comes with a little cable like this. We're going to plug it in. Now the problem is, is in the instructions, it says make sure to do a factory update, like a factory reset. But in order to do that, I have to hold one in three, I think it is for this device. I can't really remember. And it's not working. And I was like, I can't even, I can't even get to the menu. But Simon gave me a good tip. He said, you hold on to foot switch one for seven seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it down and plug it in. lights turned white. He said it would do that. And now we have our normal screen. That's awesome. So I'm gonna go down here and download the update. It's off screen right here. If you're on a Mac, it says it can't be open. So then you just right click and say open with terminal. Yes. It's gonna say we can't trust it, but do it. You know, you just push open. The terminal opens right here, but then you have this update feature and it shows you all the up updates. You can read all the release notes and download and install. So we're going to do that. Now, one very important thing is you need to connect the flexi cables, I heard in the live stream that they did um, that it's just it's just a precautionary because sometimes when the the ports are open, it can't really recognize like it needs to. So we're going to do that, and we're going to hit install. Waiting for device to enter the mode. It's connected. Preparing for new firmware. Installing firmware. It says entering bootloader on the screen. Installation complete, unplug your device and go forth, Brave Explorer. So I'm gonna unplug it. So now we need to do a factory reset after we've done the firmware update. So we hold one and three to enter into the menu. Then we need to go to system. To hit select, you just hit one and two at the same time. Go to reset, select, factory reset. Are you sure? Yes. Look at all those beautiful colors. Boom, and we've done it. Now let me show you the editor. So when you bring up the editor, you get this right here, and we can say import from device, and there are no devices found. So you need to plug in the USB to the back over here. See our unit is off, plug it in. Device is found. Our unit's back on over here, good. And we're going to click on it and push connect. Now it'll synchronize the banks and we just wait. Boom, there we go. Now we have our HX stomp, and this is the one I was showing you up front. We have snapshots one, two, three, turning on and off, toggling on and off the revelation, the drive, the boost. Let me show you. Snapshot one, snapshot two, snapshot three, long press to turn on the rev, long press to turn on the drive, the boost, long press again to toggle them off. You could switch these and put the long presses on snapshots, but it's just the way I did it. So let me show you how you see those messages. Basically, you just click on the button that you wanna see. So we have snapshot one and toggling on and off the rev. Snapshot is this pink light and the rev is the blue. So let's click on it. We have our primary toggle switch. We can change colors if we want. And then we have the secondary. Over here, we have our switch messages. So let's see what we have. I have toggle on to be, and I just know this is the um, the value for snapshots. So let's say I want to get rid of that, or let's just add another one so I don't actually get rid of this one because I have it set up. I would go to device library, click down here to effects, and push L to go to line six. 
device name, I'm using HX Stomp. And what do I wanna do? Well, I wanna go to Snapshot, but you have all these different options that you can play with. What I did was Snapshot Selection. It gives you the channel, starts with one. My HX Stomp is channel one. The Revelations channel two. The Broken Arrows channel three. Those are MIDI channels. If you don't know what that is, uh, or how to set those. I've made plenty of videos, maybe I'll, I'll link them down below or in a card. It knows already that the um, CC message is a 69 to control snapshots, and now I have to tell it a value. Now snapshots are one, two, three, which are controlled by a value of zero, one, or two. Since I want snapshot one, I would put in a zero here. Now I'm not gonna do this because I already have it right here. Boom, and I can edit it if I want. See, it's already in here. I'm gonna push save. Now I don't need to toggle it off because once you're on a snapshot, you're on a snapshot. So it doesn't need to toggle. So I didn't put a toggle message. If you do a toggle message, see how it turned pink right here? If I go to snapshot two, it immediately turns the pink off. Well, it didn't do that and it won't do that unless you set up switch groups. So let me just save and close and let me go show you the bank settings that I had to set up to do that. Over here, we have several options and I went to switch groups. Now all these switch groups, as you can see here, I have uh, foot switches one, two, and three set up just like this. So foot switch one, I put in this one group. I wanted to affect the snapshot, which is on the primary, not the secondary. I didn't want to affect the revelation in this group. I wanted transmit and receive, meaning it'll, it'll transmit a signal and it'll receive a signal from other messages in the group, like toggle back off. So what I mean by that, respond to on and off, is that when I push another snapshot, it immediately turns this light back off and it goes to those snapshots. So it's doing the, the toggling for us. It knows that if I'm on snapshot one, I go to snapshot two, I'm gonna toggle that switch off so the light doesn't stay on and you're wondering which snapshot you're on. You do that by making groups and you can make groups and do a bunch of different things, but that's how you do it. I did the same thing in the same group with snapshot two and snapshot three. That is in bank settings. Now let's go back to our foot switches just to see what I've done. Foot switch one, we just covered. Foot switch two, I did the same thing but I put a value of one to control snapshot two. And remember, this is in the group that we just covered. Same thing down here. I went to edit. Channel three is my overdrive. I'm actually controlling the drive on this. It knew that was MIDI message one, and I'm turning it on with 127. And then I did the same thing down here with toggle off. It's all the same stuff, but it toggles it off with a zero right here. And I did the same thing. I went to device library. Yeah, let's add another one. Went to device library, effects, manufacturer, this is Jackson Audio, device name, Broken Arrow 2, and I told it that I wanted to turn the boost on and off and the drive on and off for this example, but you can do all the things that it has in here, which is great. So all I did was toggle that on and off with foot switch 2. And I did the same thing with foot switch three, same process, I won't bore you with it. Now I try to think of what else would we want to do with our stomp here. In this middle one, I wanted to toggle on and off the tap and the tuner. The primary control is the tap, so I don't have to hold to try to get to a tap, it's just tapping. And then the tuner is on and off on the secondary switch. Just like that, and I went to device library and added it just the same way. I just select tuner, toggle on and off. And then I wanted to see what else I would wanna do. So I made this foot switch here and this foot switch here, toggle foot switch one and foot switch two because a lot of my HX Stomp presets, I put two of my um, most important effects right there. So that's how I did that. I went toggle on and off. It knew to toggle foot switch one that it would need a message of 149 and it toggles it on 127. Down here, toggles it off. 127. So, same thing with foot switch two on the other foot switch. Boom, it's a controller of 50 to control foot switch two. And I bet it's 51 to control foot switch three, which we could do, but sometimes I like leaving my tap tuner on the HX top itself. But if we wanted to add a foot switch three and make those the top three, you could totally do that. I also wanted to go next and previous on um, the different modes. So if I hold long press, you look at the stomp and it'll it'll go to the next page mode, like turning pages here. This one goes this way, the other one goes the other way. Also, the cool thing about this editor is that you can just type in whatever you want here, like Jimmy's pedal board, P board, boom. You're done. You can type in just anything you want right here. You just you just type it in and it makes it amazing. Then you can send it to the device. Now you can choose, I've copy and pasted this same preset 
uh, on like six different ones here, but you choose where you want it to go. If you don't choose another one, it's going to override what you had there, so just know that. Um, but let's go ahead and upload it also to Bank 7. We're going to say send to device, and you click it, and you push connect. Now, this will be a trial. Sometimes when I push connect, the screen just goes black. If that happens, you just have to unplug the device, plug it right back in. Good thing it doesn't have hardly any boot time. Um, and then it works. So they're working on this. I explained this to the guys at Pirate MIDI and they're, they're working on it. But let's see if it works this time. No, it didn't. Screen went black. So I'm gonna unplug this, plug it back in, say okay, send to device. Now it's working. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's happened more when I have my actual pedal board with other pedals on it. Um, I'll do some more trials, but uh, anyways, just know that if it doesn't do anything, just unplug it real quick, plug it back in. And now you can see that it updated, it says Jimmy's board right there. All right, there's some other really cool things I want to cover before we move on. You can copy and paste pretty much anything so you don't have to do a bunch of work all over again. One thing you can do is right here when you're on this main setting is copy the current bank switch settings to the clipboard and then you can go to another bank and paste it right there. Boom, we just pasted bank seven into bank eight. So what we're gonna do is go back to Jimmy's board that we made, I'm gonna copy it, and then we're gonna go to, let's go to bank, yeah, bank eight. We're gonna go to bank eight and paste over it. Now Jimmy's pedal board is in bank eight as well. So now that we're here, let's say we wanna change some stuff. So I'll just put change, okay, cool. So instead of going to snapshot one, let's just say I could, I'm gonna delete that, took it out of the group. So now what I want, the, the secondary turns on and off the revelation, but let's say we wanted the primary for whatever reason to turn on and off the preset of the revelation. So I'm gonna go to device library, I'm gonna go to effects, I'm gonna go J for jet, jet pedals, the revelation, bypass pedals, what I did before, but let's bypass the, oh yeah, jet, the jet has so many snapshots. You, you have infinite possibilities. Um, you can even just do, you know, dial in the decay and the mix and all that stuff. But I want preset switch on. And see, it already knows all the stuff, which is so cool. And then I need to toggle it off. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna copy it, go down here and paste it. I'll edit real quick, set this to zero. And that's how quick you can, you can work with copy and paste. It's so cool. So now I'm gonna send it to device. Hey, it didn't do it, it didn't mess up that time. Now I need to go to bank eight on my pirate MIDI so I can show you that change. But before I do, there's one more thing that I wanted to let you know and we'll hop it back on the computer and I'll show you why it does this. But I have a global setting set up that when I change banks on the pirate MIDI, it also changes presets on the HX stomp. And I'll show you how to do that. So it's gonna change our preset on the HX stomp as well. But we're gonna change banks and go to the Jimmy's change preset that we just uploaded. So I'm changing banks. And as you can see, it's also changing presets, which I think is pretty cool. So, bank seven, bank eight, there's Jimmy's change. Now if I do a short press, well that didn't work, I must have done something wrong. Let's check and see. Good, hey, learning. <laughs> We're learning. It immediately went to channel one, but I told you earlier, my Jet Revelation's on MIDI channel two. So we're gonna save that, come down here, edit it. That's what makes it so easy. I don't have to re-upload everything. I can just edit whatever is wrong. I can also send it out different, um, you know, there's different, there's flexi ports and there's the regular, the DIN 5 and then the USB. I could uncheck all these because I'm not using them, but I'm just gonna leave them all up in case I'm testing something later. But now we should be able to be sending that to the correct channel. I'm going to send to the device. It did it, it did it again. Why does it do that? It probably would have done it before had I sent it to the right channel. I think it's because it's sending it to another device, so. Now we'll send it to the device. As soon as it's done, it starts flashing. There we go. Now it should work. Let's test it. Boom. Yes, it's on. Long press, turn it on. Long press, turn it off. Short press, turn it off. Very nice. All right, so the last thing I want to show you before we end this video was how I got the Pirate MIDI to scroll banks on the HX Stomp as well as scrolling banks on the device itself. That's in global settings. We'll go to global settings right here and you have a bunch of things that we'll actually cover. So the interface settings, it says right here, first switch is one and two, bank down. So it automatically does that and it banks up right there. So you can switch all that stuff if you want. There's a bunch of things you can do in here. You can change the name device to like Jimmy's Bridge 6. Um, you also have the flexi port settings and you need to assign these before they'll work. Earlier when I showed you where you can um, send 
MIDI messages out those different um, flexi ports, the USB or the regular MIDI, you have to turn on the flexi ports to do what you want to do because you can also do a lot of other things. So you gotta tell it exactly what you want to do. Luckily you can see all the options here and MIDI out A is what I had mine assigned to. I haven't really used the flexi ports much but I know I'm gonna go in here and tell it what I want it to do when it's time. You also have your MIDI settings and it's you, there's all this stuff that's pretty much stock I think because I haven't changed it all yet. And there's a bunch of other things you can do too. There's a bunch of good resources on Pirate MIDI YouTube channel that you can go check out right now after this video. If you want to get a hold of one of these devices, click the link in the description. I am affiliated there, so it'll help support the channel and you get this amazing product. And I'm gonna start making more content about how I use this with some other future pedal boards, future pedal boards in the future. So if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments below if this is something that you're thinking about adding to your rig or not. I'd like to know. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.